Okay, here we go with section 2.4. Uh, mixed operations. So mixed operations, you can imagine. Now uh, we dealt with multiplication and division in one section. Addition and subtraction in the next. We simplified in the first. And now we're just going to look at these situations where we have to do a bunch of things. And um, when we have mixed operations, what we need to do is look at the order of operations. Uh, some of you may have seen it as bed mass. Some of you may have seen it as BEMA. Right, as BIMA uh, as well, and I'll show you why they're essentially the same thing. So, first of all, B stands for brackets. I'm hoping you remember all this stuff, right? E stands for exponents. D stands for division, multiplication, add, and subtract. Now, the reason we call, uh, we also call it BIMA BIMA is because, well, brackets, exponents, but multiplication and addition, they're basically the same thing. It doesn't matter what order you do division and multiplication because they're essentially the same thing. Uh, addition and subtraction, essentially the same thing. Some people say there's no such thing as subtracting um, because you can say 5 uh, minus 2. Well, I can write that as an addition, 5 plus a negative 2. So essentially, it doesn't really matter if you add or subtract. Um, in any particular order. It's just that you have to make sure you do division and multiplication before you do addition and subtraction. Now, that being said, let's look at some examples because that's about all we can do right now. So this is a good opportunity for you guys to sort of figure some of this out. Uh, why don't you give this a shot, pause it, and then uh, watch how I work through it. I'm going to put brackets around this thing. Obviously, I have to do division multiplication first, so let's finish this off. So uh, 1 over x plus 4. Um, division means I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal. So I'm going to put brackets on top here. And on the bottom I have an x plus 6. we got to break this down. x, x, it's minus 5 and plus 4. <coughs> Hoping that you can see that if I multiply this all together, that cancels that. And I'm left with x minus 5 over x plus 6. Then let's bring this other one down. I have x plus 5 over x plus 6. And I'm adding those two together. Well, since they already have the same denominator, that's simply x plus 6. And then I have x plus 5 plus x minus 5. And if we simplify any further, you can see the 5's cancel. You end up with 2x over x plus 6. And we're done with that question. All right? How about we try the next one? Here we have some brackets already, even though the multiplication needs to occur first. Well, look, I have brackets. That's actually the very first thing. So I need to simplify this. And in order to do that, like always, we factor. Okay? So x plus 3, and this is going to be boom, 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 boom. Now what we might be able to do is simplify each term first, but let's see if you can uh, factor these without my help. So x squared minus 9. Give it a shot. x squared plus 6x plus 9. This ends up being a perfect square. This is a difference of squares. Notice that we can simplify before we do anything. So this is going to be 1 over x plus 3. This is going to be um, 1 over x plus 3. If you add them together, you get 2 over x plus 3. Right? You guys still with me? And then I've got multiplying this by x plus 3 over x plus 1. Now we're doing the multiplication here, right? I did the bracket inside first. That's all this. It simplified to that. And now I'm doing some multiplication. So it means I can cancel those out because they're both factors. That means 2 over x plus 1 would be my final answer. So a question that looks pretty gnarly ends up not being too bad. All right? Let's look at another one here. I got two more. Now these are fractions. Uh, rational over rational. So what I'd suggest you do is take each of these separately and combine them, okay, because it's kind of like brackets. You have to do that, and you have to do that, right? So let's look at 2 over 5x minus 3 over x squared. So what's your LCD for that? Right? Well, our LCD is 5x squared. So we put it over 5x squared, over 5x squared. That means I had to multiply this by x, or so the top by x, 
had to multiply this by 5, so the top by 5 becomes 15, and I end up with 2x minus 15 divided by 5x squared. This is the numerator only. Okay, and now we deal with the denominator, over 2x plus 3 over 4x squared. And we're looking to see what the LCD is. Okay, so if I want to find the LCD here, I need to, again, look at each individual term. 2 and a 4, well, 4 would be the lowest common denominator. x and x squared, uh, 4x squared. So what we do is we put that lowest common denominator under each term. And I have to multiply this by 2x. So 7 times 2x is 14x. This one stays the same. I don't have to do anything. So this now becomes 14x plus 3 over 4x squared. This is your denominator. All right. Now, we're probably going to need a little bit more room here. So if it's this over this. All right, I can write it two different ways, but if it's 2x minus 15 over 5x squared divided by 14x plus 3 over um, uh, 4x squared, then we flip in times. Remember, 2x minus 15 all over 5x squared, and now we're going to multiply it by 4x squared over 14x plus 3. So um, we can start canceling things out, I guess, a little bit. We can take the x squared away, right? And that 4 just gets multiplied, so you end up having um, 8x minus 60. And on the bottom, we have 5 times 14, which is 50, 70x um, plus 15. Now, we can try and reduce this if we want. Uh, 8 goes into 60 uh, 4 times, no. 4 goes into 4, 15, so it's uh, 4, uh, 2x minus 15, and then it's 5, and that gives me 12, 14x, 14x plus 3, and that's pretty much as far as you can go. You want to state a restriction maybe, right? You look at this thing here, you say 14x plus 3 can't be 0. Well, you got to look all over the place. Let's talk about the restriction right now. It gets pretty gnarly with this stuff. That's a big, big question, guys, okay? There's a lot of stuff there. Uh, we've got one last one that I'd like to uh, go over with you. Uh, please try it again on your own, okay? So notice that this is just a big sort of expression on the top and a big expression on the bottom. It's dividing. So let's combine the tops first. Let's combine the bottoms as well. And then we'll have a simplified version just like we did with the previous question, right? But it's a little trickier. So uh, x minus 1 plus 2 over x plus 2. We're looking at the numerator. So my LCD here is both of those binomials. Both of those binomials. So now I've got to put it over x minus 1, x plus 2, plus all over x minus 1, x plus 2. I'm showing you all the steps. You might not have to do them all, but um, you definitely need to understand where we're going with this. Oh, sorry. I got off the thing there. Um, so notice x minus 1 is already there. I included an x plus 2, which means I have to multiply the top by x plus 2. Uh, the 2 was there already. I multiplied the bottom by an x minus 1. Boom, there we go. We can put it all over the same denominator now, x minus 1 times x plus 2, uh, and combine the tops, right? This is x plus 2 plus 2x minus 2, which is um, 3x all over x minus 1, x plus 2. There you go. This is my numerator. Now, the problem with these questions, guys, you can do all these things individually. It's just we have a big ass question now with a lot of different steps, right? A lot of different steps. So I'm going to skip a couple steps here. I'm going to put the common denominator right away for the second one, okay? I can see right away that it's, it's a relatively easy. It's just the same. You just include both binomials. Notice that in order to have, where am I, where's the, uh, yeah, in order to, let's get rid of this part now. Well, that's all right. So see the x plus 2, the x minus 3, right? Those are my denominators, common denominator, my 
LCD. So look, your LCD up here, let's write it down as x minus 1, x plus 2. And then your LCD on the bottom is x plus 2, x minus 3. So notice that you added an x minus 3 on the bottom, so you got to multiply the top by x minus 3. Here you added the x plus 2 on the bottom, so you got to multiply the top by x plus 2. So let's finish this off. Now, um, this ends up becoming 2x minus 6 minus um, x plus 2. Now I'm going to skip a couple steps again, okay, because um, I think you can follow me here. I've got x plus 2, x plus 3 on the bottom. 2x minus x is x, minus 6 minus 2 is minus 8. So this is what I end up having in my denominator, all right, in my denominator. So numerator, denominator. It's going to be this divided by this, which means I flip this. So the last step here would be to say, okay, 3x all over x minus 1, x plus 2, and I'm going to multiply this by the reciprocal of that, which means the x minus 8 goes on the bottom. I have the x plus 2 and the x plus 3 on the top. Bam! Cancel. So 3x times x plus 3, and then I have x minus 1 times x minus 8. Now, I don't know if I can actually simplify this any further. I don't believe I can. So I think I'm going to leave it right there. Boom. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, these are mixed radicals. They are absolutely uh, a little more difficult than the other ones. It just involves more steps, step by step. Look how much paper I used to make these, okay? Uh, any questions? You know what to do.